going to assemble these um, Aprilia RS125 gearbox components into the crankcase. So here we go. I found a good way to do it. Um, the standard instructions say to just hold the whole thing in one sort of assembly and then slot it in. It doesn't work very well. So this is how I do it. So with the output shaft, or the output, output side of the gearbox, and just slot it in. So you get it straight in. Too easy. Now, the next part requires me to get a wood block. It's going to support the gearbox. All right. Now we've got two gears in here. These two here, which go on the input shaft. Uh, and if you if you install these onto the input shaft first, it will prevent you from assembling the gearbox easily. So what I tend to do is just plop them in there. That's the bearing for the um, right hand side case input shaft. Just slide that in there. Then slot him on on top, lining up with the gear. All right, so now I've got the input shaft. Oops, yeah, gears on. That's your um, yeah, stuff. So I'm just going to plonk him in there. In. That was a lot of mucking around, but it's it's just how I feel. Okay, the, the wrong gears engaged, so that's fine. All right. So next comes. The input shaft, oh, input selection fork. That's this little one here. Take note that this fork has that bit there. It's the smallest of the three, shaped like that. And let's go. So there's a selector in here. Um, you won't be able to see it, but you can feel it. Slide it up and insert. Oh yeah, that's in place now, so that just slides up back and forth. He's in, so I'll just push him aside. And I'm going to do the same thing on the output shaft. There's another selector in here, but yeah, it's, it's down deep in the box. So we've got this fork. Take note of the shape, and we just slot him in, just like that. Ow. Okay, now comes the next one. Jordan. Okay. So I had a little difficulty with fitting the selection fork this time. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just, I'm just going to hold it in place on the gear and insert like so, nice and easy. Hook it into its groove. Done. Now all I've got to do is pop this shaft down there, and the same on the input side. Hook it into its groove. All done. So they're actually in place now. I can I can shift gears. You can see that the, uh, the internals spin at a different rate. There we go. We've got a different gear now. You probably want to pull that away a little bit. Yep. This bloody screen on this thing is beautiful.
Gary enjoys looming up a long hard pole. Always. We're not cutting that bit out. <laughs> and he can't ever get it in the right hole. It's okay. Oh, bugger. Just gonna bring this out on Sunday. Huh? You're gonna bring this out on Sunday? What? The camera and get some decent shots. Huh? You got your backpack. Go on. Balance shaft. This is the final step. So the final step now is to use a little bit of Loctite on this bolt. And this locks the shift drum into place. Excuse me, Mr. Cameraman. So we just pop this into here. Pause. So I've just got to torque that um, that bolt up to 10 Newton meters. Hey, when the bit comes out, I don't have the correct tool for this job. And that's torqued up to the correct factory value now. So that's done. Have a look at the gearbox assembly. It all turns properly now. You can even change gears. That's first gear now. And that should be sec that second gear. You'll note the difference in the um, speed between the input and the output shaft. It's third gear. It's fourth gear. It's going pretty quick now. Um, yeah, it should be pretty sure it's fifth gear now. Could be, could be six. I'm not sure. Um, I, it's difficult to select gears uh, without the with the without the cover on because the um, these shafts tend to want to pop out, and you don't have the ratchet on the shift drum to uh, to lock it into gear. But yeah, that's how it goes together anyway. Uh, it's pretty it's pretty simple actually. Once you once you've cut it apart, you put it back together a couple of times, and yeah, that's it.